Let me say good morning to all the members of the clergy, uh, the NYPD, uh, community residents, everyone who's interested in this work that we're doing in human justice. Uh, let me uh, offer a special acknowledgement to uh, Ruel Stevenson, whose house we are in, we're actually in his precinct, so we certainly want to acknowledge him. And certainly, uh, this is my first opportunity to congratulate our New York City Commissioner, James O'Neill. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> I think that he is an excellent person. He's going to find a more qualified uh, person to lead that position. And I think that there's a level of excitement around the city um, at his appointment. I was at the graduation, but he was so bombarded that I didn't get a chance to, so I'm glad I did so today. Uh, many of the individuals who are on the dais I know, some I don't know, but I'll certainly uh, get to know you uh, over time. Uh, we're working very closely with the NYPD and are happy to do so. And so in a few short minutes, what is human justice? A human justice is both a theoretical and a philosophical framework that was developed uh, at the Center for the Leadership on Urban Solutions. And in it, manifestation, we have launched a campaign entitled From Criminal Justice to Human Justice. What does that mean? Uh, our thinking is that if criminal is the starting point, then justice is not possible. But if human is the starting point, then justice becomes increasingly more possible. Because we know that in the human experience that any one of us can express the best and the worst of who we are. And in that human justice approach, we acknowledge that the basic dignity and integrity of every individual should be first and foremost on our agenda. Every encounter that we have should be focused on how do I preserve your dignity and your integrity. And you know as well as I know that in any situation that you're in, if someone's dignity is under attack, you've got a problem. If their integrity is under attack, you have a problem. But if in that encounter, even with your children, they understand that your dealings with them are fair, and that they're equitable, that you respect their humanity, their basic dignity and integrity, then you have an opportunity to produce outcomes that are meaningful and that are real. The human justice formula is based on three components. A human rights plus human development equals human justice. And so when human rights, and I think we're all very familiar with what those rights are, but when they're acknowledged, and when they're preserved and when they're cultivated and protected, then an individual's human development can flourish. We can begin to see an individual express their fullest potential, unhindered, unrestricted. And so the human rights plus human development equals human justice means that these two ingredients can produce a situation in a society where we truly understand that we are our brother's keeper, we are our sister's keeper, that we have mutual respect for each other, we can restore confidence and trust in each other, and certainly that includes the law enforcement community. We're all part of the community. We all have to live together. We all want the same things. I don't think that there's anyone here that does not love and want and desire public safety. Everyone wants to be safe. Everyone wants to be prosperous. Everyone wants to be healthy. So we agree on that. And so now what we're doing is forging a relationship with law enforcement that says, let's agree together, but let's do more than agree, let's work together. Let's produce public safety in a way where we can begin to identify every single member's contribution to preserving the community in the way that we want to see it. And so we are, we are very pleased to be here to present this Human Justice Summit. And I'll say just in closing that there are so many things that are happening in the city. Some you may be aware of and some you're not. And we're hoping sometime in the future we can reconvene uh, with the NYPD so they can share with us and we can share with them some of the extraordinary work that you're doing in your communities all across the city of New York. I think we'll hear about some of those things today, but there's much, much more. It's time for us to cross-pollinate, share information, share best practices, look out for each other, support each other. And so we call this summit so that you can publicly know that we are ready, we stand ready, willing, and able to work with the law enforcement community in a very mutually satisfying and meaningful manner uh, that we're ready to put our best foot forward. I think that the community is ready. I think that we have the right people in the right place at the right time. 
We have a commissioner and an executive team that is stellar. And so I think that uh, we have, we're on to the, to the right starting point. So at this time, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, someone who was nurtured right here uh, in this very space and certainly under the uh, New York City Clergy Roundtable. And he uh, is really doing some remarkable things at the mayor's office. And so I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Jonathan Soto, who is the senior community liaison uh, at the mayor's office of New York. Jonathan, please come and grace us. Greetings. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I am excited to be here uh, with you all. First, I'd like to bring greetings on behalf of Mayor de Blasio. Um, my name is Jonathan Soto, and I serve as senior liaison for the Mayor's Clergy Advisory Council out of the Mayor's Community Affairs Unit. Um, and I am very excited to be here for a host of reasons. Uh, first, um, I actually started my journey in, in faith organizing right in this space, uh, I believe four or five years ago, Reverend Hugh, um, when I had entered this space um, from my full-time job at that time that I was very happy with, and uh, Reverend Q was revolutionizing the environment, uh, trying to make coalitions, and she looked me straight in the eye, uh, said that God has something greater for you, and my life has changed ever since. And, and, and not to just continue with the accolades for Reverend Q, uh, but she really deserves them. Um, and I definitely want everyone to know that whatever Reverend Q and her coalition touches, and whatever space they enter into, something shifts, something mm -hmm. changes, and we see new ideas born, we see communities and relations be able to be better. And I, and I just wanted to honor um, not only you um, in, in front of everyone here, but to able to recognize that, that we would not have made the advancements that we've seen um, in our communities if it wasn't for people like Reverend Q. Um, and just briefly, one of the themes that I've been carrying around with me as we speak to faith leaders throughout the city is actually rooted um, in Jeremiah 29, uh, where we see that the people of God at that time uh, were exiles in a land that was foreign to them. And they were having trouble kind of identify ways um, to be able to kind of include themselves into the fabric of the neighborhoods and the communities that they were in. Um, and they actually had concerns. And God was able to speak at that time to the prophet and give a word to the people, letting them know that we understand that you may feel uncomfortable, we may understand that there may be conflict, but we want yourselves to root yourselves in this city. We want yourselves to be grounded in this city. We want you to have sons and daughters in the city because to the degree that you seek the prosperity of the city, you shall prosper as well. And I think that we as faith leaders, as community leaders, um, in relationship with the NYPD, um, we have to work together in order to make sure that we not only see the flourishing of potential opportunity here, but that we are able to root ourselves in the city that is ours, in the city that is serving as an example, not only to the nation, but to the world. And for that very reason, I just wanted to stop by today briefly and be able to present this proclamation um, on behalf of the mayor, um, not only to Reverend Q English, but also yeah. to the organizations, New York City Clergy Roundtable, um, the Bronx Clergy uh, Criminal Justice Roundtable. And Reverend Q, if you could just do the favor of opening this for me right here, because there is a declaration that is forthcoming. <laughs> and uh, on behalf of Mayor de Blasio, um, we just wanted to thank you, and we want to actually declare uh, the mayor uh, that in this day in New York City, we're going to declare Wednesday, January 11th, 2017, in the city of New York as Human Justice Summit Day. Bronx Clergy Roundtable, New York City Clergy Roundtable. Thank you for all that you do, Reverend Q. Thank you for all the faith leaders that are here. God bless you, and let's continue with this conversation that we're having today. Thank you so much. Oh. <laughs> So wonderful to watch what's happening with Jonathan and looking forward to seeing all the great stuff that's going to continue in the days ahead. Um, and right before I uh, bring up uh, the commissioner, I do want us to acknowledge, and many of us know that the office of uh, Stephen McDonald did pass yeah. away, and I know it was very dear to the heart of those that are all um, part of the NYPD. And we just want to make sure that we continue to keep 
his family in prayer, as well as his fellow laborers, those that are part of the NYPD staff. And we want you to know as faith leaders, you know, when, 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 when anyone loses a life, we recognize that there is a need for prayer and, and comforting, and we want you to know that we are praying. Thank you. At this time, um, we're going to go right into what we're here for and hearing from, as uh, we, we've heard uh, from several already, but we're, we're here to hear from Commissioner James O'Neill and those that are part of his staff. And again, thank you all for being here. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say, but right now, can we just stand at this time and honor Commissioner James O'Neill as he comes to present the Thank you. Thank you.